When I say Rolls Royce, you probably think of an enormous chauffeur-driven barge with the likes of Lord Sugar or Simon Cowell in the back. But this one's different. The Wraith is meant to be more fun when you're in the front behind the steering wheel than it is when you're in the back behind a glass of champagne. I drove over 600 miles in this Wraith to find out if that's true. The Wraith is the fastest and most powerful Rolls Royce ever made. And while there is ample seating in the back for two adults to cruise about in absolute luxury, the driver's seat is where you'll want to be. From here you get to experience that same beautifully soft and quiet ride, but with the added bonus of having more than 600 horsepower under your right foot. This car might be equipped with the luxuries and interior space of a small palace, but showed a straight road and it'll accelerate as fast as a Porsche 911. So Rolls-Royce might call this the small one, but it's still an enormous car. Uh, it's almost two meters wide, it's more than five meters long. Um, you feel like you should go in the, uh, in the HGV lanes in Roadworks, it really is huge. Under the huge bonnet is an equally enormous engine. It's a 6.6 litre twin turbo V12, uh, more than 600 horsepower. And uh, even though it weighs two and a half tonnes, it will hit 60 miles an hour in 4.4 seconds. Uh, a nice little detail is that uh, the logos on the wheels all stay the right way up all the time. They don't turn with the wheels, so when you park up, they're all the right way. Other details include lambswool carpet, so thick you'll want to drive barefoot, and a Spirit of Exidy statue which retracts when you leave the car, and which can be bought in gold or glass with a light bulb to light it up. There's also a high-end stereo and optional wood panels covering the doors, with their grains all angled at exactly 55 degrees. So obviously it's a Rolls-Royce, the interior is the most luxurious place I think I've ever been, um, but there is a lot of tech in here. Some of it's very Rolls-Royce tech, which we'll see in a minute, and some of it is quite modern. A lot of it is BMW. Um, there's an iDrive here, but it's sort of been hidden in, in Rolls-Royce luxury. Um, there's plenty of wooden leather and chrome, but on the inside it is uh, an iDrive system with your sat-nav and your phone connection, your Bluetooth, and an internet connection as well. Obviously, it being a Rolls-Royce, you've got a bit more than that. We've also got uh, electric doors that close with a press of a button. And on this particular model, we have what they call the Starlight Headliner. Now, Rolls-Royce will actually make this in any star constellation you like for a fee. This standard one costs around £9,000, so it's not a cheap option. Of course, if you are chauffeuring anyone, then uh, they want to arrive in style, no problem. Uh, the doors open backwards, uh, so you can just step out. And if it is raining, don't worry, because there's an umbrella in the wheel arch. There's one on the driver's side as well. That's actually quite warm, because the, um, the engine dries up if you put it in wet. One of the biggest technology features of the Wraith is something that you can't see and you wouldn't even know was there unless you were told. It's the gearbox. It works with the GPS uh, to know the layout of the road ahead and it uses that to work out what gear you need to be in as well as how you're driving. So if it knows a tight corner is coming up, it'll uh, prepare a lower gear. It's pretty smart. Um, eight speeds for it to pick from. You barely ever notice it changing gear in all honesty. The only time you do notice it changing cogs is when you sink your foot into the lamb's wall and there's this small pause as, presumably, the butler in the gearbox checks that, yes, sir does indeed want second gear at 60 miles an hour, and away you go. Other things that make the Wraith easy to drive, this particular model has a system where if you stray out of your lane without indicating the steering wheel vibrates. It is intimidating the first time you get in, I won't lie. It's 320,000 pounds and it weighs two and a half tons and in my case it belongs to someone else but it's quite easy once you get used to the size of the thing yeah the bonnet's so big the only way you know where the end is is because there's an ornament on it but once you learn to trust yourself it's kind of like moving to a bigger smartphone it's the same but a bit bigger look for bigger parking spaces rely on the cameras two at the front one at the back they really help and it's, it's a fairly easy car to drive. Not as intimidating as you'd expect it to be. So how do I sum up a car like the Wraith? Well, for starters, I don't want to focus on the price. The standard car is almost £200,000 before you even get started on the huge options list. At this level, we're talking about buyers who simply don't care how much their car costs. A similarly refined Mercedes or Bentley is half the price, but that isn't the point. You buy this car because you want a Rolls, and you want to invest in part of being the brand. Driving the Wraith in towns and cities is, frankly, terrifying at first. But get out onto the open road, stick the cruise control on, and nothing will let you waft up the motorway at quite the same level of comfort or quietness. This is a car which makes driving long distances entirely stress-free, but when the mood takes you and the light turns green, it'll deliver a serious shot of adrenaline. 
The Wraith's ability to glide along in supreme, silent luxury one minute, then roll its sleeves up and fire itself towards the horizon the next, is truly its greatest skill. <laughs>